it is alkaline. And that is for most animals who came from the sea. That's why people think animals that live in the sea do not have a lot of the illnesses that we have. Because salt water is acidic, HCL, right? And so it pulls a lot of the bad stuff out of the animals that live in the sea. Because when we become acidic, bacteria and illness loves acidity. So when you don't drink water, the body tends to be acidic because it's on land, right? When you dry things, they tend to become more acidic. They're concentrated. So the body tends towards acidity. That's why we have aches, muscle pain, and all of those things because we become acidic. Cancer loves acidity. Is this making sense? So drinking water is, pay attention, it forces your body into alkalinity. Because the water you're drinking is a pH 7, or some people now buy water that is pH 8 or 9 because it's alkaline water, right? They sell that. It's called alkaline water. It has a higher pH than normal water. Is that making sense? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've heard that if you drink too alkaline water, you have a risk of forming kidney stones. Well, that's the point, right? That's why, uh, did I recommend anything that you should do? No, I just recommend that you drink water. For some people, for a period of time, they may need to drink alkaline water. I just drink normal purified water. I try to shoot for high seven. If I can Manage it. Yeah, but that means I drink a lot of water. Some people, because they don't drink a lot of water, they think that if they drink eight or nine, is good for them. Well, um, the other thing that I do is that sometimes I put hydrogen peroxide in the water I drink. So it creates a lot of free radicals, extra oxygenation, because one of the things we're going to talk today about cancer is the lack of oxygen in the mitochondria. That's really what, where cancer begins. It's a metabolic issue. Is this making sense? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so water, you know a lot of people think it's trivial. You know in America, a lot of people just drink soda like him. They think drinking soda is their way of drinking water, yeah. right? Uh, most Europeans would drink sparkling water. The carbonation, helps with this alkalinity, right? Because a quartz carbonated water, extra carbon has been, for, uh, carbon dioxide has been forced into the water and that makes the water more carbonated, I mean more alkaline, right? So a lot of people in Europe, or oh, I drink mostly alkaline, I mean um, sparkling water. And the whole issue of sparkling water is where this whole issue of soda came from. But then Americans wanted to add sugar to it. So typically, even children, you'll notice, love carbonated water. It, it actually helps with digestion, right? When you drink it, it allows the gases to come out. Digestion loves sparkling. So Europeans will say if you eat and drink sparkling water, it's actually good for digestion. It aids the digestive process. Is that making sense? Yeah. Oh, Dinah is here. Right? So before we start our cancer, any questions on water? So you should always have your water. Can you get me some, some okay. water for me too? <laughs> okay, before I get into our cancer presentation today, let's talk about our cancer diagnostics. So I'm gonna go back to the whiteboard there and try and talk to you about our diagnostic process before we go deep into this. So most people, when they come to visit us or start our clinic, there are four things that drive the architecture of this clinic. 
Our process is a process of discovery, of insight, of action, and of monitoring. That's what we take our patients through. That's our process. Why do we do this? First of all, because we are using what we call clinical biomarkers. What is a clinical biomarker? Vincent, tell us, my staff. <laughs> clinical biomarker is all the uh, measurement of the biological uh, function. function. All right. For example, blood pressure is a clinical biomarker. BMI is a clinical biomarker. Percentage of body fat. It's, it, these are measures of biological function and architecture. Right? So we are not just going to look at you and say, how do you feel? We look at the data that tells us what is actually going on. And so we look at six physiological functions in our discovery. We look at your musculoskeletal, we look at your hormonal, we look at your cardiometabolic, we look at your stress architecture, we look at your immune we look at your gastrointestinal, that's six. These six physiological areas define everything that's going on in your body. So our discovery looks at all of that. And so we have all these big vendors that would look at your saliva, your blood, your urine, and your stool. All this data gives us a view of what's actually going on. The challenge is that most insurance in America does not cover the discovery process if you're not sick. And if you even do an annual physical, the annual physical is not as comprehensive as our discovery process. Because it's an expensive thing to do a full discovery. Right? It costs about how much, Vincent? If you were paying cash, it would cost you about two thousand, three thousand dollars. Yeah, around. Okay, and most insurances, because you know Americans have been socialized to say that if insurance doesn't cover it, then I'm not going to pay for it, <laughs> as if the insurers are the uh, angel Gabriel at the gate of heaven, <laughs> saying you go to hell or you go to heaven, right? That's how the insurance company has become in America. We are accuse them of not taking care of us as if they are the guardians of our health. They're not. There are organizations that don't want to make money. They want to optimize their profit. They are not supposed to take care of your health. So what, any questions around this? So how does this sit in the cancer context? We start with the premise that cancer is not actually a disease. Cancer is an aberration, right? It's like you're playing a piano and one of the strings is out of tune. That's what cancer is. Cells divide, we're gonna talk about it, they divide, they divide, and then they die. 
they go through what we call senescence and then they are excreted. At this point, some of them say, no, I'm not going to die. And then start dividing. Right? That's what happens. At that point of senescence, some cells, because of the underlying mutation in their DNA, begin to multiply out of control. And so we're going to talk about some of that stuff. And this is happening inside of us every day. All of you right now have cancer cells. But why doesn't it develop to cancer? We don't know yet, right? Because the minute this starts, our T cells, our immune system, <sighs> macrophages, eats them. <sighs> So, what happens when your immune what what happens when your immune system is asleep? What would make your immune system go to sleep? How many people have been to the opera, to the Philharmonic? So, what's the difference between the opera and the Philharmonic? <laughs> now I'm getting technical. <laughs> In the Philharmonic, oh, okay. you're watching the band. Yeah. Yeah. In the opera, the band is in the pit, you're watching the play. Yes. Yeah. Right? You don't see the band, they're in the pit. The only people, the, the conductor is the only one whose head is showing, but you're watching the play and the music comes from the pit. Yeah. Right? That's what happens in the opera. In the Philharmonic, you're watching the band, the orchestra. Okay, so the interesting thing about this is that uh, our body is like the opera. The orchestra is the immune system that is in the background, right? It is conducting. So if, imagine if you distracted the conductor in an opera, what would happen? <laughs> the, play, the play would get confused. Because the, the, it's the music from the player, from the orchestra that drives the, the opera, right? So if they're in tune, out of tune, what's going to happen? What distracts the immune system in our body? There's one major thing that distracts the immune system. You've been to class a lot, you should know. What distracts our immune system? Not you. What do you think distracts our immune system? You don't have to make so many notes. Your body doesn't. You have to listen first. You're doing this. Nobody remembers this stuff from the first time. It's very, it's too deep. Just listen, enjoy it. Okay? There's no test. With the lack of the immune system, your body doesn't fight back. No, no, no. The, what makes your immune system goes down is the question. Huh? You can be distracted by infections. That's good answer. Infections. You see, that's why like having the flu is very dangerous. Because when you have the flu, your immune system is distracted. What where is the main job of the immune system? It's the gut. 80% of the job of the immune system is the gut. Why? That's where the outside meets the inside. Right? Water, air, food happens there. That's where the big fight for the immune system happens. So if your gut, if you eat a lot of crap, then your gut is distracting the immune system all the time. That's when these boys begin to grow quietly in the background. So one of the number one things we do as part of this clinic is to fix your gut. Once you fix your gut, all the allergies, all the food sensitivities, all the persistent infections begin to disappear. And then your immune system becomes really strong to do the job 
that it's supposed to do, which is homostasis, to keep these cells going the normal pathway and getting rid of this extra one, okay? Questions around that? So I was gonna go into talking about our diagnostics. So for cancer, once you have, so today we're gonna talk about cancer, the journey of cancer. So let's say, I was trying to take you to how you get to cancer. Today, we're gonna talk, now you have cancer, what? The first thing you wanna do as part of our diagnostics, which is very comprehensive, you wanna run these tests that have been FDA approved. Today in America, only one out of 10 cancer patients runs this test. There are two of them that the FDA has approved. Cancer GPS, GPS cancer, sorry, and Foundation One CDX. And what are these two tests? They give you the opportunity, we'll talk about some of it in there, to find out what kind of mutations you have and therefore which drugs, immunotherapies have been approved for that mutation and if or which combinations or which clinical trials are running so that you can best address the treatment. If you don't do this, then your doctor is going to say you either do chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, which chemotherapy and radiation are very risky solutions. Surgery, in most cases, you might have to do it. There is it's very important that we understand something. Once cells have become canceric, they cannot come back to normal. Either the T cell destroys them or we destroy them. Why? Because they have lost 40% of their capability for anaerobic metabolism the mitochondria is impaired. It has to be killed. Functional medicine cannot kill that. So you have to do surgery or immunotherapy or something. What we can do, we can rebuild your immune system for this fight, but we cannot kill the residual cancer cells that are already there. Is that making sense? You need to understand that. Alternative functional medicine cannot kill those cells. Those cells have gone crazy. You need to use some method to kill them because they cannot be reverted. And so directionally, all we can do is build up your immune system, which is what immunotherapy also does. It uses the immune system to attack it, or you do surgery or chemotherapy and radiation. Are we clear about that? Functional medicine cannot heal cancer. It can support the cancer. What is functional medicine's big purpose is the prevention of cancer in the first case and after you've been cured of cancer to ensure you stay in remission. Are we clear about that? Yeah. Okay? It's very important you understand that. All right. Let me go back now. Any questions before we... I'm going to fly through this presentation because it's a lot of slides so that we, and if you have questions, just interrupt me, okay? So we, we call, um, sorry, we call what we do first line therapy and I have um, identified it by saying you outrun. That's why I gave you that introduction. How does one outrun? You know, cancer is like, how do you outrun it? How do you outsmart it? And how do you outmaneuver it? And why is it that cancer grows so quickly? Because cancer cells use an alternative metabolic architecture called um, uh, anabolic metabolism. So they take all the fat and the sugar and they use fermentation to make energy for this growth. 
they bypass the normal anaerobic process of metabolism for cells. Is that making sense? That's why they grow almost 10 times faster than normal cells. So you might be, they might uh, uh, diagnose you and say, oh, you have cancer, and in three months, it's all over your body already. Do you get that? So they're really very aggressive because of their method of metabolism, right? So uh, we talk about outrun, outsmart, outmaneuver. That's our cancer program, the cancer journey and survivorship. Making sense? Any questions? That's the context of this conversation today, okay? So what happens when you hear the word cancer? People collapse. <laughs> People think it's a death sentence, right? It's just cells dividing out of control. It's not a death <laughs> sentence, right? But in America, people start crying, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna die. As if they didn't know they were gonna die, right? Yeah, but now we know the date. Oh, that is so scary. It's less scary if I don't know the date, right, Louise? Yeah. I just wanna die without knowing the date. Now I know the date, oh my God, I'm so scared. What are you scared of? So conceptually, sometimes I don't understand. What are you scared of? That you're gonna go meet the God? If they tell you you're gonna die soon, don't you wanna now get ready? Good warning system, right? And I'm not joking about this. We, we need to look at cancer as an opportunity for us to fix our lives. What is it? That's what I was trying to show you. You see the normal cells? It's characterized by uncontrolled cell growth. That's all that it is. They just start growing out of control. And look at our different uh, diagnoses. Imaging, biopsy, flow cytometry, and immunochemistry, right? We do a lot of the immunochemistry and a lot of that analysis. And then these are the options for treatment right now, right? I just want to make sure we are all baseline on that. Significant side effects, right? It's very challenging treatment. Look at that. Look at chemotherapy side effects, managing long-term side effects of chemotherapy. Lots of big, big side effects. Chemotherapy is a very, very dangerous strategy. And that's the treatment that most patients are going through. And that is wrong. Okay? Any questions? So when we do chemotherapy, we kill both healthy cells and cancer cells, right? But the new therapies are fighting cancer cells while doing less damage to your normal cells, right? So as we begin to look at the new opportunity for immunotherapies, we begin to look at the whole concept of if your mutation, your mutation, my mutation are all different, if we're trying to look for the drugs to fix it, look at the challenge we have. Over 500 plus genes are involved in oncogenesis. What's oncogenesis? Oncogenesis is what happens here where the genetic mutation triggers uncontrolled growth. What, what I told you that the, there's a deformity at, in the mitochondrial level that triggers that uncontrolled growth, that oncogenesis. We have over 200 plus biomarkers. Remember what were biomarkers, right? Clinical biomarkers, they are measurements of biological function. And we have over 55 FDA approved targeted ther therapies, right? This is constrained if we look at just all the money we are spending in cancer research. And yet we're not making progress. It's really very, very complicated. Because two patients with breast cancer have a different mutational architecture. 
within that breast cancer, right? Some breast cancer, one breast cancer, may have a hundred mutations inside that. And each mutation requires a different therapy. Do you understand this? It's a very complicated disease, and a lot of people don't have knowledge, right? You know, we spend most of our time on TV complaining why we don't like Trump rather than getting educated on the shit that is already inside of us, right? So that at least we can take action on it. So let's look at, okay, this is Vietnam data. I'm not going to go into that. So these are some of the challenges. This is Vietnam slide. Sorry, I did some presentations in Vietnam. So you can look at some of the mutations and some of the occurrences and the drugs that have been approved. It's all very, very tough. So we call it the future of personalized cancer care. So let's look at the overall process. There's screening, there's diagnosis, there's therapy monitoring, there's therapy modified based on lab tests, there's continuous assessment, there's patient prognosis accurately. So if we look at this journey, we've identified three different states, and we're gonna talk about that. When you are first diagnosed, when you are in treatment or after treatment. So patients come to us at different phases of their cancer journey. The patients we currently have are patients who are in remission. But we have the opportunity, uh, and I'll just give you some material now to quickly look at. Yeah, can you pass this in So look at this page. So let's look at this page. So this is a patient with breast cancer that was undergoing both kinds of therapies, conventional and integrative. This is their timeline. Mammogram, then ultrasound and biopsy, then MRI, then bone scan. So I just want to go through so we understand this. Why are they doing an MRI? Guys, we need to know. Okay. They've done a mammogram. They've found a lump. They've done an ultrasound and a biopsy. They've confirmed there is cancer. Why are they doing an MRI? To see what to is sure. different cells in the body. How big okay, they are. They're trying to do a proper differentiation because even though it's breast cancer, it's the, it can affect the, either the nodules or the underlying muscle, or the, no, no, not that it's spread. We're coming to that. They are looking at the structure of the kind of cancer in the breast. Why do they do a bone scan and a PET CT scan? They're looking for whether it has spread. Right? You need to understand the conventional treatment, why they're going through that. Now, They've identified that it hasn't spread, so they are going to do how many treatments? Six chemotherapy treatments. And at the end of the chemotherapy treatments, they repeat a mammogram and an MRI. So what has happened here? So typically what they've done, they've shrunk the tumor and then now they go for surgery to remove the aspects of it or perhaps to do a final extraction of the breast. Okay, I'm just walking through so that you understand the treatment, what's happening there. But to support this woman on the integrated side, right, there are a couple of things and the main strategy I was talking to you 
was a strategy of beefing the immune system, right? So you start with a vitamin C infusion. Isn't that the principal vitamin for your immune support? And then we do a dietary and supplementation recommendation. Then we increase the vitamin C IV dose. You're reading it, you see, right, on the yeah. red side. Yeah. And that increases all the way, and you see an overall treatment plan that is integrated. Most patients do only the green side. And when they do only the green side, mm -hmm. they have not built the resistant architecture for remission. So let's turn the next page. Excuse me. Yeah. They, do both. they should do both. They should do both. Yes. But I don't advise chemotherapy. I just said so. We're going to talk about it because it's very destructive. So it's better you do this test and find the immunotherapy. But you know, most people don't have good insurance. And if your insurance is not very good, but you know, Medicare is very nice. If you're poor and on Medicare, this is almost free. But most insurances will cover this because this actually tells us which of the improved immunotherapy would work. Okay, I know I'm using very big words and we're in America. So who can tell me the difference between immunotherapy and chemotherapy? We Americans, shouldn't we know this? rather than wanting to see Trump's taxes? Which is more important to Americans? Knowing the difference between chemotherapy and immunotherapy or knowing Trump's taxes? Really. I'm talking to Americans. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. But how many Americans know the difference? That we would like to see Trump's taxes because that's gonna increase our T cell architecture. Okay, you see the stupidity. Not that I'm on one side or the other. We, we live in a culture where we prefer the mundane than what is important. You get that? We prefer stupid things. Kim Kardashian has 25 million followers. Charles Cena has how many followers? about a thousand because nobody wants to hear what I have to say <laughs> right so can, who knows the difference between chemotherapy and immunotherapy no chemotherapy we give the body chemicals to kill or to support to the, kill okay to kill Immunotherapy? Immunotherapy is to give nutrition to the, our immune system. Yeah, it's not nutrition. It's still drugs. Immunotherapy, we give drugs okay, okay. that fire up our immune system. They arm your Do you understand? So what it does is that it's a core CAT T cell architecture. It goes and it wakes up and says... <laughs> Wait up! There is a war going on in my liver. There's a war and you're asleep. Come on! And what happens when you receive uh, immunotherapy medication? What happens? Guys, we need to know this. Yeah. There is something called a cytokine storm. For 48 hours, the body is racked with severe flu right conditions. Some people die from it because the whole body goes into a shock because the T cells are awake and they are out for destruction and the whole body shivers as they take control. You understand? And when they take control, they destroy everything that is not supposed to be there. That's why immunotherapy is a very, very powerful architecture against cancer. Yes. Hello. Welcome. Join us. You can sit over there. Hello. Welcome. How did you hear about us? 
Stem cell, he, he has stem cell uh, consultation there. Oh, for consultation for stem cell. So yeah. we are doing a cancer workshop now. How long do you have that you can stay? Oh, We're gonna... I, I have all day. Oh, oh you are ah, good. <laughs> you see, that's a very good American answer. <laughs> okay. So it is really important that we know the difference. Chemotherapy are drugs that destroy, right? They call it like, um, remember the word we used in Vietnam? Napalm. Napalm, we just drop it, it burns everything. Orange, right? Yeah. Till today, we still have, we just gave them $100 million to go dig out the soil from the airport in Vietnam, in Ho Chi Minh, because the of orange thing is still in the soil. Mm -hmm. That's how destructive that is. That is almost like chemotherapy. It destroys everything that it touches, right? I just showed you that list. Immunotherapy, on the other hand, is as challenging. It just shocks the body into some serious action. So in both cases, whichever therapy you choose for cancer, we have to prepare your body for this dangerous journey. You understand? It's your choice. You want to go for chemotherapy and sometimes you have to go for chemotherapy because there is no approved immunotherapy for your cancer but if there's an approved one even for the immunotherapy journey we have to prepare you you saw all the issues that happen with chemotherapy we have to prepare you it is like going how many people here have jumped out of a plane parachute how many people have bungee jump Okay, so you know you have to prepare, right? They check everything, why? Because if you jumped, after you jump, there is no coming back, right? You cannot jump and say, oh, I changed my mind. You're already in the air, right? So we wanna make sure that before you go into the chemotherapy or immunotherapy session, we really prepare you, okay? Very important, okay? So this journey is a very important journey. So there are two types of treatments that are emerging. I just spoke about immunotherapy, right? Lots of Nobel Prizes are being won in that because they found ways in which you can actually wake up the T cell architectures in the body. And then there is something we're calling uh, targeted therapies where you actually, um, some people, they, they're calling it radiation where it's like targeted and they only fix it to that cell to destroy the cells there. Uh, they call it a 3D radiation now. So some of people are doing that. That's a targeted therapy. And it acts on spe spe specific molecular targets and they attack the cancer cells specifically. And sometimes we use stem cells also for that, for that targeted therapy. Even though we don't do that here, but that's one of the ways in which stem cells are used as a targeted therapy for cancer, okay? And that is really the basis for what we call personalized cancer treatment. If you use, this is what we call the CDX. The CDX is the approved, the CDX and GPS cancer are the two currently approved FDA tests for determining your cancer mutation and prescribing the right immunotherapy for you. Both of them are Medicare, Medicare will pay for them and most insurances will cover, but this, both tests cost $5,000 each. It's a very important test and I said most Americans don't know about this, okay? And this is only for people who have cancer, right? If you've been diagnosed, you can do that because you need to send the biopsy for the analysis. After you do that, you know there are two kinds of cancer, right? We have solid tumor. What's a solid tumor? Hello, Americans. What's a solid tumor? You know what a solid tumor is? I know the difference between solid and liquid. Yeah, no, then tell us. The solid tumor is a tumor that's in an organ. Yeah. 
like a breast, prostate, stomach, right? What mean? other kinds of cancer do we have? We have liquid cancer, which is that one? Blood. Yeah, the blood cancer. And right? the bone for the... Oh, inside leukemia, right? Leukemia. The one that is inside our blood cells, bone cells, right? So this one is for solid tumors, for solid tumors, and this one is for hematologic malignancies, that is the blood cancers, right? They are the same thing for that. And then this one is after your, during your treatment and after your treatment for us to track. See, now I have to teach you something else. It's very complicated. So when cancer forms, there are two kinds of cells that come out of here. Two kinds of things. One is ctDNA. The cancer cells begin to shed their DNA into the blood. Okay? Number one. Number two, the stem cells migrate from the organ where they are looking for other places where they can make their home. We call that circulating cancer cells. Circulating tumor cells. Is that making sense? You need to, this is very important that you know these two things. Because the emerging technologies in detecting cancer are focused in the detection of these two liquids in the blood. One is detecting circulating DNA, which is shared by the cancer cells in the tumor. The second one are circulating cancer tumor cells that have been shared in the blood, and they are walking around looking for a new home. That's what happens in metastasis. You have breast cancer. It escapes into the lymphatic or blood system, and it goes to your prostate or to your cervix or somewhere and says, oh, this is a good place for us to start developing again. Okay, and we have found out that um, this tend to come out of what we call cancer stem cells. That's why that guy won a Nobel Prize in 2018 on that issue. Very important. Okay. Any questions? A lot of heavy stuff, huh? Good stuff. A lot of heavy stuff. Okay. Questions? Oh, everybody is happy. So that's what CDX does. Um, which is our main provider. It does the genomic to determine the targeted therapies. It does, looks at molecular insights. Very interesting. Looks at two big things. Microsatellite instability. Uh, Microsatellite instability is the spikes, the spindles that are on every cell. Cancer cells have specific ones and um, that's what the immunotherapy, the T cells look for. They can tell which one is a cancer cell based on its microsatellite instability. It, they're like spindles on the cells. you cancer. <laughs> but you know, cancer cells are very smart. They can. They use normal cell cover. But these immunotherapies can, you're lying. You're fake. They uncover them. Then also we look at the tumor mutational burden. Right? Some people, this is your whole tumor. 90% is of one mutation, 10% of another. Some people have the same, and they have 50 mutations in the same tumor. So that tumor mutational burden is a very important measure as to how to approach the cancer. Making sense, guys? That's why we're spending billions of dollars on this shit. Okay? All right? 
and then you can do clinical trials also. Okay? Now we get really deep. This is actually Trump's tax return. <laughs> I don't want to go through all this. It's too much detail. It's going to overwhelm you. See all that stuff I was talking about? The total number of mutations per coding area of a tumor genome. Very deep stuff. That's what it measures. Right? You see patient A, four mutations. Patient B, one mutation. So it depends uh, what your tumor mutational burden is. Right? And then the, 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 the treatment is then driven by your mutations, the cell therapy, cancer, and all those things, okay? It's different ways now to using a cell therapy. That's the stem cell therapy process. We collect your blood. We activate the T cells. This is really becoming a very good way. So we actually take your own blood we activate your T cells. We engineer the T cells with a specific gene that we know is going to fight. We grow and expand it. Then we give you infusion. And then the war begins. The minute we put that infusion into you, there is 48 hours of uh, uh, an intense big fight, the big fight. Right? And people will, you know how like you've seen movies of people recovering from cocaine addiction or it's a really tough session of when once do, because once the T cells enter the body engineer, this is like they have been given magnum force. So now when they go into the body, there is no forgiveness. They, every enemy that they encounter is damaged badly, okay? So it's a very tough methodology, but that's the future because it targets only the bad people, right? Lots of data on that, and these are the kinds of reports that uh, Foundation One will produce, right? So lots of data on this stuff, all right. So that's what our labs would do, would help with that. That was really the explanation to the Vietnam team. Okay. So this is Vietnam data. See how cancer is growing in Vietnam. Same not, uh, have you seen the World Health data on cancer growth, even in the US? It's crazy. That's Vietnam data. See by 2040, see the thousands of cases that they're going to have. So because each figure represents 10,000, right? Each, each of those represents 10,000. So look at the number of cases there in a very small country of like, all right? So this is our overall process. If you've just been diagnosed, if you're in treatment, after treatment, and life beyond cancer, right? It's a very, very interesting journey for all of us, right? For most of us who have, don't have cancer, the question is prevention. And most people don't listen to me. And what is the number one prevention against cancer? Sugar-free. Wow. Sugar-free. Wow. <laughs> she got it. You, you sound like you're a plant. <laughs> she was spot on. No sugar. No sugar. But the challenge with that is that there are so many foods in our culture that have hidden sugar. Well, a lot of people don't even pay attention. All processed food has sugar. All processed food. And most restaurants, I found out, all restaurants, their sauces and their... I, I don't know when we got this obsession with sweet taste. 
But 50% of our tongue is sweet. And that's why there's an attraction and addiction to sweetness. But it, the only way I am finding is to either eat at home or to eat raw. It's to cook your own food and to eat raw. That's the only way you can escape the sugar trap. Because cancer loves sugar. It, just, it loves that fermentation process with sugar. Right? That's the core. How do you create a rich environment in which cancer does not thrive? So I go back to what I said before. Everybody has cancer cells. There are cells that, because of toxicity and other things, infection in our environment, cells during their dying process escape and start dividing. Num rather than die normally through senescence, they escape and start dividing. So if they escape and start dividing, the question there, how do we make sure they do not thrive? How do we make sure our immune system is alert and awake so that these people don't grow out of control? That is really at the core of integrative medicine. You cannot say I will be without cancer cells. All of us have cancer cells. It's because we live in the world, we breathe toxic air, we drink some toxic thing, the food is not perfect, right? Even our spouses are not perfect. They might be toxic also. And then the other one that is really big is stress, right? If you read the book, Blue Zones, how many people have read the book, Blue Zones? Or the uh, Scientific America issue of the Blue Zones? You know, there were people in New York who had cancer and they went back to their country in Greece, to Corsica and to the islands, and the cancer went away. Totally changed their lifestyle. Start eating natural, start sleeping properly, start drinking proper water, reduce that bullshit stress of traffic, right? He was stage four, 12 months, no therapy, cancer gone. Blue zones, go read the book, Costa Rica is one. Loma Linda is one. Those are places where the, the incidence for chronic illness is very low. Go to the islands in Japan, stop flicking. Go to the islands in Japan and you will find out that all these people, they're in their 80s, 90s, 100s and they don't have chronic illness. They don't have high blood pressure, they don't have cancer, they don't have high cholesterol, they don't have diabetes. Go read it, go see the videos, right? And these women, right, in the, what's that island called in Japan? Um, I can't remember, I mean, you'll find, huh? Yeah, just Google it, the Blue Zones in Japan. You go there in the Blue Zones, Costa Rica is one. These are people who are living in nature. They're doing the things that are very, you know, we talk about stress here, and we look at the four aspects of stress, and three of them are very hidden away from us. Okinawa. Right? Okay. Yeah, Okinawa, yes. In Okinawa, those women are very, very, very healthy. It's amazing because I grew up in a village, and you know in the village, by the time the women are 85, 90 years old, all their husbands have died. And so they have this collection of old women who are very feisty. Go see the movie about Okinawa and those healthy women. At 95, they are still diving to get fish, or find uh, what those, those shells. 95! They're still diving. So what is the secret to that kind of health? Oh, 
Wow, you're a God woman. Exactly. The big is, is about the God. Because once the God is clean, your immune system is awake and available. When your gut is compromised, your immune system is in what we call chronic inflammation state, right? That's what causes chronic inflammation. Bad food, bad food and toxicity. So they looked at what they call the hallmarks of cancer, right? And they looked at the things that would govern the transformation of normal cells to cancer cells, right? And it's very interesting, and this is a lot of big words, right? It's a lot of big literature. But there is this, there's a paper on this issue. It came out in 2011. And these are all the things. Look at one of those gray ones. Resisting cell death. That's what we were talking about here. The normal process of cell death is called senescence. These cells, because of their mutation, refuse to die. And they start dividing, right? Then they have, when you have tumor promoting inflammation, we just spoke about chronic inflammation. When you have um, avoiding immune destruction, they cover themselves like normal cells so the T cells cannot recognize them, right? So we have strategies to paint them so that they can be recognized. Then, um, so I can go on and on about that, but that's. So how do we address this, right? We screen, we manage the short-term and long-term side effects. We try to, this is if you're going through treatment, we try to reduce the toxicity that is coming either from immunotherapy or chemotherapy. We try and clear all your pathogens, right? How do we find out which pathogens you have? from your stool, the microbiome, and will tell us a lot of the pathogens, because as you are clearing with micro, with um, um, the probiotics and the prebiotics, and the detox, it begins to clear all of the bacteria, the fungus. Like this morning, after I played tennis, I was in the shower at the club, and my friend was walking barefoot on the floor. I said, Tom, you cannot do that, my friend. If you get that fungal in the fungus in your feet, it takes more than a year to cure. And as we all know, that treatment for fungus destroys the liver. There's no other way to cure it. Very bad. I had it 15 years ago. And since then, I remember it took my podiatrist 12 months to heal that fungus. Since then, I don't even go to public pools, and when I'm in the club, I have my slippers. Very important, guys. Pathogens, fungus, and bacteria. Because one of the things with funguses and bacteria is that they never leave your body. After you've taken all the medication, about 1% to 2% of them go hide in your organs. So I told you that when the circulating cancer cells are traveling around, they look for those organs that are compromised by bacteria, fungus, and viruses. That's where they go find home. Is this making sense, guys? Then we address your nutrition problems, right? She's talked about sugar. We just said excess sugar intake because we are being nice. Most Americans like uh, Luis cannot give up on sugar. Really? Well, he's a young man. He thinks he will never die. He's going to catch up with you. <laughs> I know, right? Most Americans are like, oh, but I love sugar. When I was in Vietnam, I was talking to them, but I love sugar. I said, do you love life or do you love sugar? Well, you have to make a choice. It's actually, they say they love dessert. 
Well, you make it nice. You make it nice. Make it nice. Sweet. Now, this time, sugar is the cocaine of food, so you yeah. are addicted to sugar. Yes, it's an addiction. Actually, it's worse yeah. than cocaine addiction. Yeah. 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 The sugar addiction is worse. Because, I mean, you know, I am, um, what did my friend call me who was an alcoholic? I'm a normie. <laughs> I, I'm not addicted to anything. I just like stop eating sugar. Just eat fruit. Once in a while, you will address your sweet requirement. I mean, but because I'm normal, I don't get addicted to anything. I'm just like, I just stop it. And then you begin to stop carbohydrates too. And the fruits that are sweet, you begin to stop them too. Because for those of us who are already in the metabolic syndrome, you just want to like, shh, no. Just don't go there. Because any opportunity of providing extra glycolysis, glycogen, into the body feeds those guys. That is really the core issue. Okay, so it's glycogen, which is the fermentation pathways that those cancer people love. Okay, then we want to address chronic diseases, chronic stress. That's why we do the musculoskeletal measurement. We're gonna do it for you too, a free body composition analysis right to find out your obesity level and your chronic inflammation what causes chronic inflammation gut. leaky gut a 95 percent of americans have leaky gut you can't escape from that except you are taking except you fix your gut you detox about three or four times a year and you take pre and probiotics every day. If you don't, right? If you don't do those things, you have leaky gut. You have to stop eating wheat. Gluten, yes, Glu gluten. That's one of the things because that's really what punctures the gut, right? If you're not doing the things I just said, you have leaky gut. If you have leaky gut, you have chronic inflammation. Once you have chronic inflammation, your immune system is compromised. That's really at the core of the issue. Is that very simple, guys? It's very simple. And so, cancer will come. That's why we call it outrun, outsmart, and outmaneuver. Out How are you going to outrun? How are you going to outsmart? Right? The big areas within our program, I'm going to close it here. The big areas, so let me finish by then talking about how we run our 24 month program. So, why do you think most people are not doing prevention? Madam, I didn't get your name. Nicole, why do most people not do prevention? They're not knowledgeable or aware. They, you know, they, they don't know what's going on. But how can you live in a democracy like this and you don't know well, what's going on? They're too busy with their day-to-day life. They don't do research. And they are too busy with the, the Kim Kardashian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they, they know what they know. You see, Madam has gone to, Nicole has gone to the core of the issue for us. Our strategy here is to empower you through knowledge. That's why we run these workshops. Because through knowledge, you will then take action. But if you're lazy and you don't even want to get the knowledge, like what I've been showing today, then you are going to die stupid and ignorant. There's no debate about sugar. It's not. It's the, and most doctors will not even tell you that. And we're still selling soda. Rather than accusing Russia for collusion, we should ban soda. No, we elected the government. So you yeah. can't say government is not those people. Where is the pyramid of fruit come from? And who are telling 
the people in the government what to put and what's right and how many glasses of, of, sh of uh, milk you should drink and how much protein and you know what? All these lobbyists are from all these companies, Monsanto, blah, 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 and they all there telling the government, our government that we trust to take care of ourselves, that's bullshit because they don't, and basically, we Nicole, I think you should come up. work for me. <laughs> she uses my language. Bullshit. <laughs> Do you hear that? And then we end up being stupid. Yeah. And then we go on opera and tell them, <laughs> and we're supposed to feel sorry for you. No, the companies are shifting their strategies. They're now saying in their ads that they have made it a smaller. Anyway, just time. listen to me. No sugar. No, yes. sugar. no sugar. My God. <laughs> Even people, people are going to the super grocery store and you buying. You know what one of my children told me? Oh, we just buy the, 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 the salad in the bag and we just toss it. I said, you don't wash it? <laughs> oh, it was washed before it was packed. No. And I'm like, where has laziness come from? To the point where you can't even rinse salad you buy from the grocery store. Do you see what has happened to us? Deep laziness. Deep. Deep. My mother taught me a long time ago, always have a bottle of vinegar next to your wash basin and every fruit and everything you rinse in vinegar. A drop of vinegar in the water and rinse it at least to kill most of the bacteria on the surface. You must always wash your hands. I travel to the airport, people pee and poo and walk out without washing their hands. I'm like, oh my God. And we are going on the same plane. Yeah, you want gloves and masks. There's bacteria people. Oh, they sneeze again. Oh my God, oh my God. They're going to kill me with their bacteria. <laughs> Flying on that plane, I'm like, I can't even breathe. Woo! Survived it. Right? So, um, I was going to talk about, we look at the following systems. So, we have strategies around the physiological areas. Our number one strategy is with the gastrointestinal work. Our GI architecture. That's our biggest job. And we are looking at a couple of things in the GI. We are looking at your barrier function. What's the barrier function? It's the lining of your brain. Oh, she, Nicole is too smart. <laughs> You're not a typical American. I'm French Canadian. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Nicole, you're cheating. <laughs> it's the French Canadian. <laughs> See, you have what you just said, the lining of the gut is one of the largest organs in the body. Barrier function, if there's no integrity here, absorption and elimination cannot take place. And many people think, oh, I'm fine. No, most people have compromised barrier function. They take metamucil. Yeah. <laughs> Because, and one of the reasons why is because we don't have an eternal fiber. You shouldn't be taking smoothies. Eat the fruit. Right? Eat the fruit. When you smash it all up in that machine, it destroys, yes, you're getting the other things from it, but you lose the fiber. Soon we will be like those people in Wally. -E. How many people have saw the movie Wally? -E? When they ring the bell, our feeding bottles would drop them. <laughs> and when the ship landed, that's how everybody was walking. Go watch the movie, Wally. It predicts the future of America. We'll all be like waddling. Why were they waddling? Because they haven't walked for a long time. They've all fat. And you know how we were making babies? Go watch that movie, Wally. Yeah, they, they, they there was a factory where you make babies. <laughs> and people just sit around all day with bell time. Cream! Feeding bottles drop. Everybody sucks. <laughs> right? So we do barrier function. Then we look at the diversity. Right? Then we want to look at inflammation. Right? So there are many things we look at our GI program. 
Then the next step is that we look at three important things. We look at your cardio metabolic, we look at your stress, and we look at your immune system. The reason why these are on the second level is because when we fix your gut, it actually fixes most of these things. Yes, when we take care of your gut, it fixes most of most obesity, most inflammation and stress comes from the gut. So when you fix the gut, any residual issues here may be specific. And finally, we then look at the hormone, right? But exercise would have been fixing. Some people say we should go hormone first, but we want to do hormone last because hormones are very delicate issues. So we want to fix all these issues, and if they persist, we then know that hormones might be driving it. But sometimes we want to do hormones early also if you're already having adrenal issues, right? So it depends. That's our intervention strategy. But I focus most of it because most people who come have no idea about their GI architecture. So we, a lot of our detox and all of that, even if we're preparing you for cancer, your cancer journey, we want to fix your gut. Because when we fix your gut, it's going to address all these big issues that chemotherapy or immunotherapy is going to destroy. You understand? Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any questions? Yo, what kind of doctor are you? I'm not a doctor. Who are you? <laughs> I'm the CEO of the company. We, I have doctors that work here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we started anti-fragility health. Um, so we run clinical research upstairs. Oh. And it was out of me looking at the future of the drugs in the pipeline. And that scared me because all the drugs are not working. Oh. Right, Louis? Yeah. And that scared me as I'm growing older. I'm like, shit, there's no drug for dementia. Mm. There's no drug for Alzheimer's. There's no drug for diabetes. There's no drug for arthritis. arthritis. There's no drug for Crohn's disease. And we are seeing the pipeline that's coming to you 10 years, right? That's what we are seeing upstairs. And I'm like, there must be another way. My grandmother was right. I need to go back to nature. And so we started doing the research and we got the licensing for functional medicine and lifestyle medicine. And we thought we should open another clinic downstairs and start really looking at life differently. And it's been a journey now of what? This clinic has been open for a year. Um, it is very difficult also to even find clinicians who have the knowledge and the commitment to education. You know that unfortunately in our culture, everybody is caught up with making money. So to find, and most clinicians are graduating with lots of debt. So I cannot afford to have my clinician standing here teaching to you, and I pay them 150 bucks an hour. <laughs> That's the price. It's my company, so I prefer to run the class because I have the knowledge. Actually, I'm more competent than they are. Right, Louise? <laughs> That's how much they would charge me to stand here and run this class. It's very difficult. We, we are at a very challenging point in our culture that it's a money impasse. Mm -hmm. And people say, oh, but Charles, your price is too high. And I said, the question of life is not about price. What is it about, Vincent? It's about value. It's about value. So I'm going to close class by talking about that and educate you Americans on value, right? So let's talk about what kind of life we want. There are three kinds of lives.
that we want. Number one, Vincent. Uh, a long, good, a good, good life. life. A good life. What is a good life? Okay. Number two. Long life. <laughs> <laughs> That's determined by somebody else. We want a pleasant life. Good life. So we can shop and do the good things of life. Number three, we want a meaningful life. I want a rich life. <laughs> <laughs> That's here. That's meaningful. That's here. <laughs> Okay, you see, when you look at these three things, at the pyramid of giving you these three things is health. Number one is health. Number two is what? Knowledge. Number three is relationships because we can't do this shit by ourselves. Number four is time. And then Nicole, number five is what? Money. <laughs> Those things give us what we call, what I call, I designed this, call our freedom box. The more you have of these five things, the more freedom you have. The freedom is not determined by the government. It's determined by you. You could live in China and be free. Or in Vietnam. People think I have to be in America to be free. Bullshit. There are people in <laughs> Vietnam who are living a better life than people in, in Los Angeles. There are people in Shenzhen who are living a better life than people in Los Angeles. You don't have to be in America to be free. Freedom is defined by you. Do you get that? That's why I look at immigrants, I think they're stupid. Why do you want to come to America? You'll be poor and stupid and on skid row. Right? Because we create this deception that a democracy. No, democracy requires responsibility and accountability. If you don't have it, you are fucked. That's it. Freedom sits in this domain. If you're a billionaire and you're not healthy, you will, yeah? In spite of 50 billion, he couldn't cure his cancer. See that? As Nicole said, you don't have knowledge, you're screwed. As we all know that happiness and relationships sit at the center. There's a reason why God created us in communities. And God wanted us to get married <laughs> and have children and grandchildren. You know, sometimes I think it's punishment, but I'm sure <laughs> he was smarter, right? Because I look at people who don't have kids, I'm like, baby, perhaps, right? I have two sets of twins, I have five kids. Now with two okay. grandkids, right? How many of them talk to me? I can't remember yet, but <laughs> one or two, right? Time. I am a big proponent for how you use your time. I don't waste my time on stupid shit. Actually, I don't have friends. I'm not interested. I don't, I'm not interested in people who waste my time. This is our most valuable resource. You know why? We don't know how much of it we have. Because as when we look at what we call the circadian clocks, all our cells, the length of their lives is given already by the architect. Your cells are gonna stop. So you know Nicole said a long life. We say a long and healthy, healthy. life.
means healthy. Nicole, you've come to the right place. <laughs> we, we have the elixir of youth. Mm -hmm. If your nutrition and everything, your stress is zero, you put all those things, we can give you the elixir of look. We found the golden path. You see the point? So a lot of people are out there wasting time arguing about a lot of bullshit. We want a good life. I remember my grandfather in the village. He had a good life. Every morning he woke up, took care of the cows, the pigs, went to the farm, worked hard. By 2 p.m. he was back, had lunch, took a nap, enjoyed himself. He lived to 106. He had a pleasant life. He would say, Charles, your parents are all stupid. They all go to the city. And they all died in their 60s and 70s. His life had deep meaning. He gave me passion. He's the one who inspired me, my grandfather. My parents were all in the city chasing bullshit. Right? And in the end, we need to find meaning. And, and put our to put some purpose in our lives. Okay, guys? And the only way we can do that is to build a freedom box, right? How could I build this clinic out of our own investments if I didn't have the freedom to do that? Right? And I know, right? I told my staff, it's going to take time for us to build this because Americans are lazy and not very smart. Slowly, they're going to come to the awakening that, oh, they have to drink water. Why do I have to drink water? <laughs> I want to drink Coke. <laughs> Why do I need to stop eating sugar? I like sugar. <laughs> Yeah, why, oh yeah, why do I have to exercise? <laughs> why do I have to sleep seven hours? I like to sleep just four hours and play my games. Why do I have to sleep at night? I can sleep during the day. There's a reason why the sun rises and the sun goes down. It's called the circadian clocks. There's a reason why in the village you eat only during the sun hours. You know, I went to this conference, this Nobel Prize on this issue. We discovered electricity and we thought we could start eating at 9 p.m. at night. That's not what the architect discovered. You should not be eating after sundown. If the sun is not in the sky, metabolism is over. Over. The body cannot deal with food when the sun is not up. Okay? We'll end there. And they are calling it now calorie restriction and time restriction. You should eat only when the sun is up. No food when the sun is down. Okay? That's how our ancestors eat. We got electricity and we got arrogance. All right. <laughs> Nicole, you want to let go top. Can you do Nicole's body composition first? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Did you have your body composition? Yes, she did it. So that is typically when you start a conversation with all your friends. Okay, because as you have heard, it's a very complex conversation. Very, so you cannot have it. You're not in a place to have it. Uh, can you help him, Luis, with 